After losing his appeal yesterday, Alex Rodriguez called the evidence against him false and unreliable. Referring to Tony Bosch, he said that the arbitration panel relied on the hearsay testimony of a criminal. This scandal first broke in 2013, when an unhappy business partner of Bosch stole client records from Bosch's clinic and shared them with a newspaper, the Miami New Times. What came next was a contest between Major League Baseball and baseball's richest player. The league's investigation was more FBI than MLB. But baseball commissioner Bud Selig told us this was a battle to save the game, and he was determined not to lose to Rodriguez. In my judgment, his actions um, were um, beyond comprehension. And I'm somebody who's now been in the game over 50 years. Never seen anything like it? I hadn't. No. And so you decided to make an example of him? I wouldn't call it an example. I think the penalty fit what I saw was the evidence. What was it about the Alex Rodriguez case that was an outlier for you? <sighs> Scott, if I, as I looked at everything on all the players, and then I got to Alex Rodriguez. You put all the drug uh, things on one side, and then all the things that he did um, to, in my, impede our investigation, and really do things that I had never seen any other player do. I think 211 games was a very fair penalty. In the early days after the clinic records were published, Tony Bosch found himself on the same side as Rodriguez, denying all. But Bosch told us Rodriguez wanted insurance that his secrets would be kept. Bosch says that associates of Rodriguez met him at this apartment building and asked him to sign an affidavit which said he had never supplied performance enhancing drugs to Rodriguez. This made Bosch nervous. He wanted a lawyer and he refused to sign. Then, a couple of days later, he says Rodriguez's associates met him at this restaurant. One of his associates said, well, you should, I think you should leave town. We're going to get you a plane ticket to Columbia. We want you to stay there until this blows over. Uh, we're going to pay you, I forgot what the number was, 25000 or $20,000 a month. And then when you come back, we'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll give you another 150000 Rodriguez's people told you to go to Columbia. Columbia. And they'd take care of you there. And they'd take care of me there. Bosch says he was suspicious and turned down the offer. Did you believe that Alex knew about this offer, knew about this meeting? Nothing happens without Alex's approval. I, 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 I used to be in that inner circle. Um, and nothing happens without him approving. We wanted to ask Rodriguez about that charge and all of the allegations, but he declined an interview. His attorney, Joe Tacopina, described the allegations as unbelievable. Are you saying that Alex Rodriguez was not party to or aware of any offers to bribe Bosch or threaten him? Absolutely not. He didn't bribe anyone. There was no allegation that he bribed anyone. And the notion that Bosch is now coming on a television interview without the benefit of cross-examination or an oath um, is laughable. Commissioner Seelig told us that the thing for him that was beyond the pale was what he describes as all of the efforts to obstruct Major League Baseball's investigation. Scott, it's unbelievable. I'm going to say that. I, I look and I just, I, I'm in disbelief when I hear that because it's, it's, it's almost the exact opposite. Major League Baseball went on an effort and a campaign to obstruct justice by by forcing and compelling witnesses, threatening witnesses, and, and they have the gall, the gall to accuse Alex Rodriguez of obstructing the investigation. I mean, it's, it's laughable. Tony Bosch told us after he turned down the Columbia offer, things got sinister. He says his ex-girlfriend received a text message in Spanish saying Bosch would not live to see the end of the year. His world was shrinking, but he didn't know the half of it. At the Manhattan headquarters of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred had his sights on Bosch. A lawyer by training, Manfred runs Major League Baseball as the chief operating officer. Commissioner Seelig told him to do what he had to do to get to the bottom of the scandal. 
Manford hired the former director of the United States Secret Service and a number of retired FBI agents, more than 30 investigators in all. In the underworld of Miami, word got around, and a call came to Major League Baseball. Turned out, there were more documents from Bosch's biogenesis clinic. We got a call um, from a, a gentleman who identified himself only as Bobby and said he had the biogenesis documents and offered to make an agreement with us to, to, to get those documents. Make an agreement? He offered to sell them to you? That's correct. That's correct. He and offered, offered to, to buy them? He offered to sell them and we bought them. How much? A uh, hundred thousand dollars originally and then there was a second purchase for twenty five thousand dollars but when you pay hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to a guy who only identifies himself as Bobby doesn't that immediately call into question the authenticity of the documents he's gonna do anything he has to do to collect your hundred and twenty five thousand we were eyes wide open um, with respect to the questions that would surround these documents in terms of authenticating them in any legal proceeding, um, making sure they hadn't been doctored. To authenticate the documents, Manfred needed the cooperation of Tony Bosch. Your team filed suit against Tony Bosch. That's correct. To put pressure on him. Yes, we'd sued him, we'd sued his brother, yes. You were caught in a vice. Yes. What were you thinking in that moment? I was in a dark place. It was, I, excuse me. I had no idea what I was going to do next. And I relied on the advice of one of my lawyers. And that advice was what? Let's go to Major League Baseball. Let's al align ourselves with somebody as powerful as as Alex. Your telephone rings and it's Tony Bosch's lawyer, finally. Right. What did he want? He wanted a direct meeting with me. On May 9th, 2013, Rob Manfred and the MLB's chief counsel, Dan Halen, met Bosch at this Miami restaurant. He was fidgety, nervous, uncomfortable. What did he want? His principal concern from the very beginning um, was his personal safety. What did he tell you? He told us that there had been threats on his life. Um, we knew from our own investigation, and this was a great source of concern to us, that there were individuals in this web of people that surrounded Biogenesis that had criminal records and that by reputation were dangerous. Were these associates of the baseball players? Some of them were associates of baseball players, which was an issue of great concern to us. Some of them were associates of Alex Rodriguez. Are you saying that Alex Rodriguez and or his associates were involved in threatening to kill Tony Bosch? The individual that was of greatest concern to Mr. Bosch was a known associate of Mr. Rodriguez. Do you think Rodriguez knew about the threats to Bosch's life? I don't know what Mr. Rodriguez knew. Um, I know that the individual involved um, has been an associate of Mr. Rodriguez's for some time. The deal was done right there. Bosch would testify and in return, baseball would pay for his security, pay his legal fees, drop its lawsuit, and defend him against any other legal claims. Bosch began telling baseball about the effort to obstruct its investigation, including this bank statement for an unsolicited wire transfer of just under $50,000 to Bosch's lawyer from A-Rod Corporation, Rodriguez's private company. The money came before Bosch began to cooperate with baseball. Bosch's lawyer returned it. You think that's a bribe? I do. I do. Rodriguez's appeal of his suspension was heard by a three-member arbitration panel made up of Rob Manford, David Prouty of the Players Union, and Frederick Horowitz, an independent arbitrator. During the hearing, Rodriguez's lawyer, Joe Tacopina, challenged Bosch's testimony. Aside from all his credibility issues, um, his past lies, uh, the fact that he has all the motive in the world to try and help Major League Baseball because it will help him get out of a massive criminal prosecution as they've promised to do, um, just look to the science. Science will defy Tony Bosch. It's Tony Bosch's word, uncorroborated by anything. 
and, of course, um, science. Takapina says the science would show that if Bosch was doping Rodriguez, Rodriguez never could have passed a dozen drug tests. Takapina says that Bosch was essentially paid to be a witness when baseball agreed to cover his security and legal fees. Alex Rodriguez has filed a suit against Major League Baseball that claims that you paid him essentially $5 million. There's absolutely no basis for that claim. It's just absolutely untrue. You say you can't pay him to be a witness, but you're paying for his security guards, you're paying for his lawyers, and you're dropping your lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Haven't you given him every incentive to tell you what you want to hear? Every incentive for him to lie? I think that um, Mr. Bosch's credibility on these issues, um, whatever his motivations, whatever we did for him, was established by his willingness to come in, raise his right hand, testify, and by the fact that he had all sorts of evidence that supported everything that he said. He's told both stories, that he had nothing to do with this and he had everything to do with this. How is that credible evidence? The credibility of any witness is determined by a, a, a trier fact by looking the individual in the eye, listening to the story he tells, and then lining it up with the other evidence. And frankly, nobody came in and contradicted what Mr. Bosch said. There was no witness that ever came in in the case and said, Tony Bosch isn't telling the truth. Rodriguez never made it to the end of the arbitration hearing. When the arbitration panel turned down his request to call Commissioner Selig as a witness, Rodriguez stormed out with a parting comment to Rob Manfred. He said to me, Rob, this is um, BS and you know it. A few hours later, Rodriguez showed up on CBS's New York sports radio station, WFAN. Were you guilty of any of these charges? No. And I should Did have you do warning. anything wrong? No. Did you do any PEDs? No. Did you obstruct just anybody, any witnesses? Did you do anything that they accuse you of no. doing? No. Nothing. Nothing. So you're guilty in your mind of nothing. I, I, I feel like I should be there opening day. Alex Rodriguez has called all of this a witch hunt. I think the most important point to remember is that for the first time in the history of the joint drug agreement, the player accused of wrongdoing did not take the stand in his own defense. So whatever Mr. Rodriguez has said publicly, the fact of the matter is the evidence in the case contains no denial from Mr. Rodriguez.